Okay, let's determine the convergence or divergence of some series. We'll start with problem one and work on through. There are probably going to be more than one way to approach some of these problems. Like, I don't know if the ratio test might work here. But what I see when I look at this is one divided by n times two to the n plus one over three to the n minus one. And I think that this looks really close to the geometric series two thirds to the n and two thirds to the n converges. And if we take a convergent series and multiply it by one over n, that shrinks the series, if it was less than infinity to begin with, it will still be less than infinity. So I think I'm going to try to do something involving the comparison test. But this isn't a geometric series. Is there any way I can make it? geometric. Well, this numerator could be rewritten as two times two times two to the n minus one. And we can pull a constants out of series. And now we're basically done, although we still have to, you know, formalize this and make it a correct argument. Certainly one over n is less, wait, sorry, one over n times two thirds to the n minus one is surely less than two thirds to the n minus one. N's going to infinity. I mean, if you have like one one b of nth of something, it's going to be less than the original something. This is a geometric. And it converges. So the smaller series converges via the comparison. Test. Let's do a few more problems. We'll try to strike a balance between having so many videos that it's hard to scroll through and not wanting to cover too much material in any one video. Let's do two in this video and three as well.
I think this has the potential to be one of the harder problems on the test. But when you see the trick, the actual argument takes maybe two lines to write down. What's the limit as n goes to infinity of the cosine of one over n? Well, as n goes to infinity, one over n goes to zero. And the cosine of zero is one. And if the limit is ever anything other than zero, the series diverges. That is the nth term test. Problem three also has the potential to be difficult, I think, just because we didn't spend a lot of time on the test I want to use here. Of course, we did cover it. But the test we're going to use here is taught in the same section that the ratio test is taught. And the ratio test definitely gets pride of place. I'm talking about the root test. And the reason I think that the root test will be a good idea here is that it involves taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of this thing. Um, properly speaking, I guess we need absolute values, although all of this is positive. And the nth root and the n cancel each other out. The reason we don't use the root test a lot is that it's usually hard to deal with an nth root. But here we just have cancellation. This limit um, is an indeterminate form. The numerator and the denominator are both going to infinity. So we'll take the derivatives. And we get a limit that's greater than one. And the root test works in the same way that the ratio test works in the sense that you look at this limit and if it's, I wrote down exactly the wrong thing, you look at this limit, and if it's greater than one, the series diverges. If it were between a zero and one, the series would converge absolutely. If the limit were equal to one, the test fails. So just like the ratio test.